Hey everyone, Andy here, and today I'm checking out the SR PC4 as well as the uh, F65 and SR codec workflows. So uh, the PC4 is the sort of download station that comes uh, that's available for the uh, the uh, F65 and also works with all the uh, Sony SR uh, memory cards. This is a Sony SR memory card. Uh, you can record onto it SR compression, which is sort of standard HDKM SR format, as well as on the higher end versions, the, uh, the faster ones than this, you can record F65 raw content. So the PC4 can be used to download and work with uh, both F SR uh, codec as well as uh, SR uh, F65 raw content. Now this was actually material shot with the uh, Sony R1 recorder. This is the R1 recorder. Uh, you see, it may have seen it before. It is a uh, portable recorder that would be used with the F3. It works perfectly with the F3 uh, for recording 444 S-Log content. So certainly this is a good combination and the PC4 acts as a download station for the R1 and for the F65. So uh, we'll talk about both of those as we go through here. But first I'm going to go ahead and put this card into the, the PC4 here just to get it up and you can see I put it in there it will uh, light up there uh, and, and mount it. Uh, how the uh, the F65, how the PC4 works, just in the back here, so you can see it. Uh, I have uh, a uh, Ethernet port back here, and that's how I control the unit. Uh, the the, uh, the PC4 has a uh, web uh, server in it, essentially for controlling it. So we'll check that out in a second. Uh, I have an Ethernet. I mean, I have an SDI port back here for for playback. This is an HD SDI port, uh, and then I have next to it a uh, uh, well, the power plug, and then I have next to it there a uh, PCIe express slot. Essentially it's a, uh, it's a card slot for putting in third-party uh, cards and I put in there an eSATA card. Uh, you can also put in a 10 gig Ethernet card and, and possibly in the future additional uh, cards will be able to go in there for downloading uh, content directly. So I put eSATA in and we'll talk about how to mount that as well as other methods here uh, in a second. So um, I have the, uh, the, the, the PC4 set up. Let's go check out how to actually uh, interact with it a little bit. Uh, again, the material shot on here is SR codec, F65, uh, raw content can be worked with the same way or similar. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the uh, Ethernet port uh, into uh, this guy. And then I have the other end of that right into my MacBook Pro uh, so I can uh, directly uh, mount uh, the, uh, I can directly talk to the PC4 through a web browser. So I'm going to go ahead and start up a recording here on my screen so you can see it. Recording. And here we go. And I'm going to open Safari here. And notice I have no uh, Wi-Fi on and I have no connection because I'm plugged in over Ethernet uh, directly to the PC4. So I'm going to type in the IP address of the, uh, the PC4. It's on my network. And it's by default 192.168.0.1. Uh, enter. Now, it kind of loaded up, but it kind of didn't. I and mean, what happened there, and I see you see some parts of it there, is because that's caching in my system. Uh, in reality, uh, it's not connecting at all. And that, the reason why is because my network's not set up correctly just right now. My network settings are not. So I had to change my network settings in order to do so. System preferences here, should open that up. Network. Uh, and I'm gonna go to my ethernet connection here, and then go to uh, manually set my settings. And, and dial in an IP address really close to my other one that I know, the 192.168.0 address, and then just go to the next IP address available, number two. Uh, and and that, that's just because uh, it, you can't use the same address, obviously, uh, but I just just somewhere nearby. And then I set my subnet mask to 255.255.255.0. I just one that I know that works fine. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and apply that. Okay, good. And now I go back here and, and enter again, and voila, there's my interface loaded up. Uh, looking good. So you can see here on the home page, here's the home page, uh, that I have my file list. So I have various files that are on the card, and I can play them back, just like so. And if I go, if I plug in my SDI port here to my monitor, I should actually see playback. So there you go, playing back right off the PC4, very nice. Um, as you can see, though, this file, if I go back to the computer, this file is a uh, 5994, 1080, 422, 10-bit SRSQ file. It's the SR codec in 422.60i. Uh, if you look at the top of the list here, you'll see a clip that's 2398 PSF. I need to change my settings in the PC4 in order to play back those particular clips. Right now, I'm actually playing back only 5994 uh, interlaced content. Fine, no big deal. 
You can change settings in a little. I'll show you that a little later on. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that. And by the way, it was playing right there. It's a little preview window. Uh, I'll have other areas here which I'll go over in a minute. But let's first go to import where you can see how data would be imported uh, by, by selecting clips that you want to bring in and saying add. Uh, when I add that though, it's going to complain that something is not mounted. Basically, I need a drive directly mounted to the PC4 in, your, in order to work with this, which is what we'll talk about in the next section. So import doesn't work just yet. We need to set some stuff up. Uh, let's go to proxy though. And proxy sets up the way that the uh, little viewer plays back content. So right now I can see it normally, but I can instead say, let's say, let's see a waveform instead. Go to home, and now I have a waveform for playback, and you can see that actually moving as I uh, play it back. Uh, back, to, back to proxy, I can say, no, actually I want to see a vector scope. Do that, back home, and now I have a vector scope again, uh, moving as I play back. Uh, so it's got a, some, some functionality built right into it, which is pretty nice. Uh, additionally, I can change uh, the overlay modes, etc., of how this all works. But I'm going back to normal for now. And I can go to cookie and save all these settings for later if I want to. Uh, additionally, I have this SRPC setup window here, which allows me to load in lookup tables for playback. So say I shot an S-log uh, on the R1 or on the F65, I can apply a lookup table to the output of the, uh, of the menus there, uh, output of the, uh, of the PC4. Uh, and then my monitor settings here actually apply that, that lookup just like so. So it works with ASC, CDL type lookups. It's a nice option. Uh, and you'll need that uh, for playing back content on set, of course. So very nice. You can also or, you know, work with your cards, update them, uh, et cetera, here. This is, the full, this is the full system for working with SR memory. Uh, and then finally down here is the, uh, the last two things, disk setup and diagnosis. Disk setup, I, I want to have to dial in an NFS, which I'll show you how to set up in the next section. Or, or I'll set up my eSATA here. This is where I actually mount uh, drives to my unit, to my PC4. Uh, and then I go to Diagnosis here. And this is where I can change my system format. And that's sort of how you change your playback format in the, in the camera. So uh, I would go in here and say, OK, um, PC4, I want you to play back 2398422. If I set that and reset the, reset the PC4, uh, I would uh, then be able to play back that first clip that I had listed there before. So, uh, additionally, I can set up uh, manual IP addresses, etc. In Network 1, Network 2 here, I can set up a 10 gig Ethernet if I had one installed. In the future, I'll have Wi-Fi options as well, which is nice. Uh, version updates, uh, just obviously updating the PC4 itself with new firmware. Uh, so it's a pretty straightforward device for playback control, etc. It works well. Uh, and also, for downloading, we, we'll, we'll talk about that in the next step, which is to uh, do a uh, a disk mounting process. So in the next step, we're going to show you how to do to mount a uh, an NFS, a file share from the Mac, uh, and then also mount directly an, an eSATA uh, drive. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you in a bit.